I'm gonna take this chord progression. and turn it into this chord progression. So I was watching YouTube videos the other night, just looking on the internet for a video or some videos on gospel guitar, gospel rhythm guitar, voicings, progressions, things like that. And I couldn't find any really good ones, but I did find a bunch of piano videos on gospel chord progression. So I went down the wormhole and watched like three hours of it. And it came up with a lot of interesting things or little gospelisms that if you learn them on the guitar, you can jump in to playing gospel rhythm guitar a lot easier. In fact, as soon as I, you know, watched all these videos, I pull up a play list of gospel music and I could you know identify probably 70 or 80 percent of what's going on a lot better and a lot faster so if you learn these things and really all they are is little connectors to get from uh, chord to chord that dress things up and little moves that you can learn and I'll show you how to do that we're gonna be in the key of C major for this lesson and we're gonna be looking at the song how great is our God that Chris Tomlin tune it's really simple and you know most contemporary worship music you're gonna play some variation of a one five six four one six four five some variation using those chords so like a c major an a minor an f major a g major back to a c major just some version of that and that's great but it sounds a little bit square and if you want to get into gospel music you just need to learn these little gospelisms of how to move from chord to chord and a couple of different voicings to make things a little more interesting to get things started, let's just go through a couple of chord voicings that I'm going to be using here. Uh, the first one is just a regular C major bar chord. We have a B minor 7 flat 5. Then an E augmented. And I have a sharp 9 on top that I like to use. We can do just E augmented. Then I have an A minor 7. G minor 7. Then you can play a C7. Just an F and a G. I'll, th I'll show you some variations of these along the way for the voicings as we work through this progression. But it all boils down to this. Here's your basic simple progression that we're using. C, 1, A minor 6, F for the 4, G for the 5, and C for the 1. All we're going to be doing is dressing up the spots in between those chords to gospelize them or give it some really nice sounding transitions from chord to chord and throwing in some new voicings too. The first little move that you need to learn is getting from the one to the six chord. And this is pretty cool. You can start out just on a C major, the one chord, and then you go to a minor seven flat five, the diatonic one. So just the seven chord in the key of C major, which is a B half diminished, B minor seven flat five. And then you move to an E augmented chord. So. It's just based on the third scale degree, but it's an augmented chord instead of normally what it would be a minor, it would be an E minor. We're just gonna play an E augmented. And then I like to throw the, the sharp nine on top. And that leads you into the sixth chord. And I like to use a minor nine, this voicing right here. Just gives it even that little extra edge, that gospel edge. So that's the move, the first moves that you need to like train your ear to recognize and then train your fingers to play. So from the one, half to minus seven, I'll go to three, and then to the seven, sorry, the six chord there. That is a far cry from this. Way jazzier, way more gospel sounding. And as soon as you kind of put that in your Rolodex of ear training, you're going to recognize it instantly when you hear it. Anyway, the next move, the second move we're going to talk about is to get to the four chord. And it can be from the six chord. It can be from pretty much any other chord. But it's basically a two, five, one progression in the key of F major or the four chord. And you move from your six chord that we just played. You can walk down half steps to a minor five chord. In this case, the five chord in the key of C major is a G, so we play a G minor, G minor nine, and then you're gonna play a seven chord, a dominant seventh chord, 
but on the one, so a C dominant seven or a C nine in this case. And that's the basic move to get you to a four chord. So from the six, minor five, and then a dominant one chord, and that leads you into the F. And I like playing an F major seven there, just to jazz it up a little bit. But that's second move. So now all of a sudden this chord progression is gone from to this. And that may sound like a lot, but a lot of this is just learning these few new chord voicings and then getting these actual moves between chords of the decoration in between the chords between the one and the six the six and the four down to where you know them really well. The next little decoration brings up kind of uh, two points, and but they're in order. I'll show you the one thing that I like to do, or one thing that's done a lot in gospel music, is putting in a diminished or half diminished chord in between chords that are a whole step away. So for example, if you're on your four chord and we're about to go to our five chord in our progression, you can throw in a minor seven flat five that's a half a step above the four chord. So an F sharp minor seven flat five, and that'll lead you into the five chord. So from the four chord, half step up, half diminished, into the five chord. So that's the, the third move. The fourth move is this chord right here. And all it is, it's an easy way to play an 11 chord, a dominant 11 chord. And the concept is that you just play the root of the five chord, so the G, and a triad that's one whole step below the triad of the chord you're playing on. So if you have a G right here, G root, and then a G triad right here, just move the triad down one whole step to play an F major triad. And that gives you an F11 chord. It's a really nice way of thinking about a more complex chord where you really don't have to memorize any new shapes. You just have this triad, move down a whole step, slap your root on. And it's really cool sounding for a five chord to give it a little bit different color than And that leads you back into the one chord. So going from the whole thing again, the one chord, half diminished seven, augmented third, six, walk down, minor five, so a two, five, down at seven, one right there into the kind of momentary modulation of F major right there for the four chord. Then half diminished walk up to the dominant chord do just a G, you can do our trick where you have a triad that's a whole step below the G triad with the G in the bass, and then back to the C. And the last little tip I have for you, the last little gospelism, is to take the one chord, just the C major chord, leave the root in the bass, the C, and then use a triad that's a fifth away to create a more interesting sounding uh, chord for the one chord. And it ends up being just a nine chord, like a major nine chord. So what's the fifth away from C? It's a G. So we would just play a G triad with a C in the bass. And you can kind of flip back and forth between that. It's just a regular C major chord. So I'm gonna do something right now that I need to ask for your forgiveness for, and that's I'm going to sing a little bit with this chord progression, and there's no way around it, but I wanna give you context for this song, so. How great is our God, sing with me. How great is our God, all will see. How great, how great is our God. So you see how that really jazzes things up and really makes it sound very gospely. Now, one thing you have to remember with this stuff is you can't just walk into your church gig that you have and play this while everyone else is not playing it. The band all has to kind of be on the same page for it to work. But this is a great way to start getting into the world of gospel chord progressions and being able to identify what you're hearing in gospel songs to get into them and learn them faster. 
So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I know I've had a lot of fun going through and messing with these concepts over the past couple of weeks. Take them, apply them to your playing, and I have a challenge for you for this particular video. Go find a normal church song that you played that has these four chords in it, the one, the five, the four, and the six, and see if you can apply these ideas or concepts to those chord progressions. It's a really good exercise. And let me know in the comments below if you have any other tips to kind of give your playing that gospel edge. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you later.